Chapter 32 About Veneranda As we entered the moonlit complex, I experienced a strange sense of wonder. Those sheltering trees, those verdant fields, held my unwavering attention. I was indirectly asking veiled questions, hoping that Narcissa would provide some explanation. In this great complex, she said, there aren't only paths leading to the umbral. There isn't only the raising of plants for their nutritious juices. Minister Veneranda has also created excellent areas for our educational lessons. And noticing my positive curiosity, she continued, those areas are the so-called green halls, which are also for educational purposes. Scattered among the trees, there are places wonderfully suited for the lectures given by the ministers of regeneration. Others are used for visiting ministers and scholars in general. However, there is one of rare beauty. It is reserved for the meeting of the governor when he visits us. Periodically, the tall trees are covered with colorful blossoms, giving them the appearance of towers of natural charm. And we see the sky as our sheltering roof. We have the blessings of the sun and of the distant stars over our heads. Those natural palaces must be truly wonderful. They certainly are, the nurse continued enthusiastically. I've been told that 40 years ago, Minister Veneranda's proposal was excitedly applauded all over the colony. Thus the campaign to build the nature halls began. All of the ministries cooperated, including the Ministry of Divine Union, which solicited Veneranda's help in building such halls in the Forest of Waters. Delightful sanctuaries were built everywhere. I myself regard the ones they built as schools as the most interesting. They vary greatly in size and shape. In the educational complexes of the Ministry of Elucidation, Veneranda built a virtual star-shaped castle of prodigious foliage that houses five large classes of students taught by five different instructors. In its center, there is an enormous apparatus that is used for showing images, like a movie projector on Earth. It can show five different projections simultaneously. The initiative improved the city considerably comprising something that is both practical and spiritually beautiful at the same time. When she paused, I asked, How are the halls furnished? In the same style as earthly ones? Narcissa smiled and remarked, No, there's a difference. Inspired by the gospel scenes of the age that witness the earthly pilgrimage of Jesus, Minister Veneranda suggested that we use natural resources to build the sanctuaries. Each natural hall has benches and chairs carved out of materials taken from the ground and covered with soft, sweet-smelling grass. Such materials give the halls a distinctive beauty. The minister declared that it would be fitting to recall the sermons of the master on the open shore during his divine travels along the Sea of Tiberias. Thus the idea of nature furniture came from this recollection. The upkeep requires constant care, but the hall's beauty more than makes up for it. The kind nurse interrupted her explanation, but noticing my silent interest, she continued, The most beautiful hall in our ministry is the one reserved for the governor's lectures. Minister Veneranda learned that he had always been fond of ancient Hellenic landscaping, so she decorated the hall in that style, with small freshwater channels, beautiful bridges and ponds, seats made of the interlacing branches of trees, and rich vegetation. Each month, the display of color is different due to the different species of flowers. The minister reserves the loveliest for December in order to celebrate Christmas. That is when the city receives the most beautiful thoughts and earnest promises from our incarnate fellow spirits on earth, and when Nasolar, in turn, sends its sincere prayers of hope and service to the higher spheres in homage to the Master of Masters. That hall is a source of joy for all our ministries. Perhaps you already know that the governor visits us nearly every Sunday. He stays for hours there, conferring with the ministers of regeneration, talking to the workers, offering valuable suggestions, examining the neighboring areas of the umbral, receiving our visits and good wishes, 
and comforting convalescing patients. At night, when he has time, he listens to music and attends artistic shows that are staged by the youth and children of our educational institutions. Most visitors in Nasalar come to our ministry just to visit that nature palace, which comfortably seats over 30,000 people. Listening to her interesting explanations, I experienced a mixture of joy and curiosity. Minister Veneranda's hall, Narcissa continued enthusiastically, is also magnificent, and we pay special attention to its upkeep. All that we do in recognition of her great devotion is nothing compared to the outstanding service of that selfless servant of the Lord. She has introduced many, many beneficial measures to the ministry on behalf of the most unfortunate inhabitants of our colony. The government considers her service record at Nasalar as one of the most praiseworthy. She has put in the greatest number of work hours and is the oldest officer in both the government and the ministry. In fact, she has been actively serving this city for over 200 years. Impressed by what she said, I remarked, she must be truly venerable. She certainly is, Narcissa replied respectively. She is one of the most highly evolved individuals of our colony. The eleven ministers who share with her in the directing of the Ministry of Regeneration always seek her advice before making any important decision. In many instances, even the government center consults her for her enlightened opinion. With the exception of the governor, Minister Veneranda is the only spirit who has actually seen Jesus in the resplendent spheres. However, she never mentions that distinction of her spirit life, and she avoids all reference to it. In addition to what I have told you, there was another incident involving her. One day about four years ago, Nasalar awakened to a celebration. The Fraternities of Light, which rule the Christian destinies of the Americas, paid a tribute to Veneranda. They awarded her the Merit of Service Medal for having completed one million hours of persevering, uninterrupted, and uncomplaining service. Until now, she is the only one in the whole colony to be awarded with such an honor. A generous commission came to give her the medal, but in the midst of the overall joy of the ministers and the crowd, she only wept in silence. Afterwards, she donated the trophy to the city archives, claiming that she was unworthy of it. She transferred the honor to the collective spirit of the colony in spite of the governor's protests. She requested that all the upcoming celebrations for her deed be canceled. Since then, she has never alluded to her award. What an extraordinary woman, I said. Why doesn't she go to higher spheres? In a lower voice, Narcissa said, Within herself, she lives on planes far higher than ours, and only remains in Nasalar out of a spirit of love and sacrifice. I've heard that our sublime benefactress has been working for a thousand years to help a group of loved ones still on earth. Meanwhile, she patiently waits. How could I get to know her? I asked enthusiastically. Narcissa seemed to be pleased at my interest and explained, Tomorrow, in the evening after prayers, Minister Veneranda is coming to the hall in order to enlighten some learners regarding thought. <laughs>